guys progressed? We have. We've progressed a lot. So we, we still, a couple things we're looking at. So internally, our IT infrastructure is going to download, you know, download the footage from the cameras. So you're talking about roughly 500 a day cameras that will be downloaded. So we're working on the IT infrastructure, what that's going to look like, what, what costs we have associated there. And then we're still on track for the pilot in the spring. So we'll have, again, four to six vendors, 20 to 50 cameras per vendor. Uh, we may not have all of those on the street at one time, but over the course of a few months, have those vendors come in and again provide cameras for us. And that'll help us from a spec standpoint. What do we, what do we like in terms of features of the cameras, that type of thing? Help us write our spec, and then everything we've got to do in October. So that's your test run? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then, so, so in October, when it goes out to bid, when would we actually see a real program that's not just the pilot? So we will have a, a bid spec in place, and as soon as the city is able to accept bids, you know, this time next year, late October next year, whatever that is, whenever city procurement gets up and running again from, you know, they transition away from the ending the budget year to starting the new one, as soon as that happens, that bid will go out. So, so our goal is to have that big, bid spec written, approved by city procurement, and, and out on the street. And I believe it's out for, uh, it may be out for 60 days, something like that, however long it normally stays out. Whatever the city's procurement process is, obviously we're gonna go with that. Uh, and then and then we'll get the specs in and, and we'll have a, at that point then we'll have a vendor and, and they'll know how many cameras we're going to order and then however long it takes them to deliver is however long it'll take the camera program to be still. So probably in less than a year we'll see the officers fitted with the, the actual program. We will probably, no, it'll be after next October. Okay. So, and, it, and I'm, I'm guessing if we order, and again, this is a, 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 a speculative number, if we do 500 cameras on our first order, I'm guessing it will take them a month or more to deliver that to us. We'll get them in here, get them out of the street as quick, as quick as we can. So sometime between October and December, January of next mm -hmm. year, uh, we will have our first real cameras from our program on the street. And the goal is to have every every patrol officer, Absolutely. everybody that's not a, a detective or, or, or sex if, crimes if or something If you wear like a uniform that. on the street, you're going to have a camera. That's Tell me that important. again, sorry, I cut you off. So if you wear a uniform on the street, you're going to have a camera. So you may be a detective, and, and right now we're still working through some of this policy, but if you work on the street, at any point in time in your uniform, that uniform is, part of that uniform is going to be the And when are you going to instruct the officers to recruit? Well, that would be part of the policy discussion that we have, and we haven't gotten to that. So we are looking at you know, policies from all around the country and, and digging that in. We, we do have to give some discretion there because you, you've got some agencies around the country that have had some issues with union contracts and those type of things where you can never turn the camera off. And that really doesn't make sense for the industry and things like that. So you've got to have the ability to, to, to build some things in there that officers can turn the camera off for. There's a great video out of Bradford County where there's a missing child and there's a, a detective who walks up to a couple of residents and a woman comes out of a trailer and she says, if you turn that off, I'll tell you what I know. The officer turns the camera off. So there are going to be situations where we need the officer the ability to turn the camera off, but we also have to have some very strict accountability on when it needs to be on. So they know that as well. So we'll work through all that, and, and as of today, we don't have that policy for really the Because that's the concern of a lot of people is that if the officers have the discretion, if they know they're going to do something that's not according to the rules and protocol, right. Right, they might turn it off. Well, I would say this. Before we, before we jump to that conclusion, let's build the program first. Let's put the policy in place first. If we have those issues, we'll address those. Clearly. Um, but we want to build a policy that's pretty solid, that's, that, that makes good sense, not only for the officers, but for the community, and, and have, a, have a policy out there that works for everybody. Body cameras are not mandatory. Why are you making this decision to have them? Because it's going to be a lot of work for you yes, and a lot of money out of your budget. Right, right. Listen, I think it's important for the community. We are at a day and age today where, even different than 10 years ago, um, there are a ton of cameras on the street. So especially in... in climate today in terms of law enforcement the community and that relationship transparency is incredibly important and there's no better transparency than, than to have video of recorded interaction between officers in the community uh, you know th there was a time where you may not have needed that but unfortunately in today's uh, you know today's climate we do need that i think it's important for our community and i think it's a, listen it's an issue nationwide it's not just for jacksonville and, and it, as you see i know you've done some research lots of places in the country Going to the camera program. So again, I think it's going to be a good thing for not only you know the law enforcement in the country, but, but it's definitely a good thing for us here in Jacksonville. Was it hard for you and some of your senior leadership to adopt at first because it's totally different and, and it is really you know keeping a close watch on every single second? It's it's really not a difficult decision to make. Some of the challenges 
that we had were not about what people will see. It was the privacy issues, it was the, it's the cost issue, obviously that we talked about a lot. Those are really the hurdles. The, the hurdle was never, you know, we don't want the public to see this interaction. Uh, it, just the contrary, we do want the public to see the interaction. They need to see what the officers are, are, are dealing with and working with every day. Investigatively, it's gonna help us in a lot of different areas. So again, I think it's a good thing for our community. We, we have uh, a good feel for that inside the organization. Lots of officers are in favor of this move. And, and there's a lot of good benefits that come across too. Okay, let's talk about the cost. Do you have any idea, roughly, what it's going to cost? I know you've given some numbers, but yeah. That so we change. we anticipated early on uh, three to five million startup. It may be a little north of that, uh, depending on you know spec of the camera. Uh, now including the IT infrastructure pieces that we've got to fix. Uh, keep in mind we're coming out of a period of time in our budget where we put a lot of things off. Uh, and we didn't do a lot of things we should have done, especially in terms of IT infrastructure. So we are, you know, we're looking at all those things, but we're still in that ballpark, you know, uh, three to five million, maybe a little more startup, uh, maybe three million a year to sustain the program. Uh, some cost, anticipated costs have gone up, some have gone down a little bit, so I think we're still in the ballpark. We're going to put that in the middle of the table, in a hard number, uh, and then begin to work with city council. The last thing we want to do is have the council have a sticker shop, and we present our budget next year. Oh, by the way, we need all this money from a lot of gamers. So, so council with uh, council them in that process and, and what the costs are going to be. So again, nobody's surprised uh, at that number when it, when it comes out. Of and you can also get some federal help, right? We Possibly. can. We're going to, and we're do, doing that now. So mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, uh, any opportunity we can to leverage some federal grant dollars, mm -hmm. knowing full well that it's one-time money. Um, I, I think in, in the past, people have asked me about what the feds will fund the body payment program. That's not true. The feds will give you one-time money for a body payment program, but you've got to be able to build around that and sustain it moving forward. We will obviously take whatever they'll give us and use that in, you know, in, in starting up our program, but we got to know that it's, it's one-time money we have to be able to sustain it. Okay. Anything else? Oh, they were good. So uh, how many how many officers do you think will be outfitted when this is done? 1,683. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. So we'll have, again, if you wear a uniform, you're going to have a camp. So we obviously will start with our, our uniform personnel on the street first, but we will eventually work up to – as you are issued a uniform and a gun belt and some handcuffs and all the other things, part of that issue is also going to be a lot of things. Okay. And then as far as hiring new employees, you're going to have to make a new bureau for body cameras? or yeah, Well, we'll have to have a body camera bureau. You know. I think as you look yeah. around the country uh, to deal with the public records request, to deal with you know so many things that, that again, are created by you know the, the, uh, having that video. Mm -hmm. So think of an officer who walks up on crime scene. So we've got to be able to pull that evidence out and get that to the correct investigative unit inside the agency. So a lot of things, you know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, pulling video away that's for evidence, pulling video away that's for internal affairs investigations, uh, uh, lots of different, you know, and, and to include public records. So when we have video that is, you know, it's appropriate to, it, it is a public record, we've got to be able to get that video out of our system and give it to whoever asks for it. And I'll ask you this final question. Are there any cases that you're investigating right now within the department that you wish you had body cameras? <laughs> you know, I can tell you, there, there's. It would make it easier if you had video on everything, and obviously we don't. Um, but uh, it, moving forward, I think that is going to help a lot of cases that we deal with. That, that you know, we'd like to see that on video, um, and, and sure, it's going to help moving forward. And there's absolutely cases that you'd love to have video on today, but, but we just don't have it. So um, I think. Um, as we move forward, I think people will get more and more used to the fact that you know we do have capability to you know, those interactions. And again, good good for us as an agency and good for right. We can get a couple cutaways real quick. Um, yeah, and, and the, the interesting thing, thing about Miami that they brought up that I didn't think about was they, they say that they believe they're going to save money in the long run because of the lawsuits Correct. that yeah. they don't have to fight. And that's because you know, I've heard when that they too. show the video, they just say, yeah. "Here it is." Well, you know, right, so right away, and I don't, I don't know what Miami's numbers are, um, complaints on average drop somewhere around 30 to 30 percent. So is it officers acting better? Could be. Is it citizens acting better? Could be. There's a great uh, story from UNF, the uh, police uh, chief of police unit, Frank Maxey. Right, yeah. Chairs. So Frank has a body camera for the officer. I don't know if has seen it, but he still has it. Um, you know, the officer stops the camera. 
he's doing, when you stop people, you got right. anything better to do? And he says, ma'am, I'd like to know what I think you're saying he's being recorded by body camera. And she says, oh, yes, sir, I'll send you a driver's license and registration. So it, if it makes the interactions more cordial on both sides, great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so, but, but a, a lot of benefits. Yeah. A lot of benefits, yeah. for sure. We're pulling video of somebody down in Miami that tried to pass a bribe. Don't, on camera? She yeah. tried to pass yeah. a bribe. And, you know, it, it would have been... You know, he said, she said, but they right. had it on camera, right. and it just, right. you know. That's true. I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of unintended. Uh, there, there's things that we're going to have to grapple with, that, which is which is why we are talking to so many different people in the country. Um, but we're still going to have things here that we haven't heard yet that happened here yeah. that we got to grapple with. But there's also a lot of good unintended consequences from the like potential of less, you know, yeah. less lawsuits, less settlements, less, you know, less attorney time, all that's going to it's all a benefit. It doesn't solve all, though. because It does. It's not a magic bullet, that's for sure. What was the, uh, the Charlotte? You can't tell. Yeah, right? I mean, that, I mean, that's the thing. They have the footage, and you can't tell. You can't see it. But at some point in time, <clears throat> you know, you've got to oh, have it. Oh, he'll be fine. 